Fantastic. Thanks, Quinn. And hello, everybody. And remember, tonight's sponsor is Guided Meditation for the Advanced Practitioner. Feel the OM. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, there is a chat function for a reason. Go ahead and let us know you're out there, because by God, you're out there. We're in here. Go ahead and do it. We're going to start our show tonight with Alabaster Pembrose. Alabaster Pembrose is a famed architect and centenarian. Centenarian! Weighing in on his approach with a stay-at-home order and interior design. Alexander Pembrose, now! Alabaster Pembrose, now you're talking with Dave McKay! Um, Alabaster? Oh, 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 Bernadette, Bernadette, please, remove my face shield. I, I, I hear you, Alabaster, I just don't see you. Yes, hold on one minute, I have my sleeping mask acquired. Ah, yes, thank you, Bernadette. Ah, Holy folks! Ah, Alabaster. Dave McCabe, as I live and breathe, ha <laughs> ha. Holy, all of the phone conversations we had, I never expected this. Well, but of course, where else would I be, Dave McCabe? Ha <laughs> ha! I can't imagine. So tell us, Alabaster, famed architect, how, what buildings, what structures have your footprint on it? Do you have a foot, don't you? Dave McCabe, I find your humor very invigorating. Ah, a foot, a hand, a limb. Nay, my whole body is imbued in my architecture, for I am my architecture. <laughs> oh, man, it's like, you know, you want to be the thing, you know what I mean? You want to be the, the, the football player. You want to be the ball. And you're Dave. being structure. Dave McCabe, you've underlined the thesis of my life's work. Yes, for centuries, artists have thought to imbue themselves in their works, and I nearly followed that pursuit to its zenith. Uh, as you see before you, I have become my greatest creation, a 72-room Victorian mansion. Oh, 72 rooms? What made you pick the room you're in? Well, this is the master room, and... Uh, needless to say, I certainly wouldn't pick the debauchery room. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Of course well, I, I have to say, I've studied the masters, and you're clearly one of them. With Thank Leonardo you, Dave McCabe. But, but I have to ask, with Leonardo da Vinci's David, he said he didn't chisel the David, but he just looked at the granite and removed everything that wasn't the David. Is there any similarities that brought you to your current state? Yes, I suppose if you were to recall that trite anecdote by some bygone Greek, I may be following in footsteps, but truly, did Leonardo da Vinci make himself out of marble? No, he toiled with rocks and chisels and stone. I have made myself into my own medium. I have redefined what it means to be an architect, nay, a piece of architecture. So please choose your references more carefully when comparing my paradigm shifting works to that of the old archaics. You have humbled me, Alabaster. Humbled. <laughs> Clearly, I need to be doing more. I've seen Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water in person. Yeah. And I must say, that pales in comparison to the genius, the, the craft that you are. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I remember young Frank. He was a troublesome troublesome chap. He was under my tutelage for several years back in the early arts. Um, that is, of course, 1910 to 1914. And let's just say I am impressed with what he made of himself. Uh, but, but what you've made of yourself, Alabaster. Ah, yes. <laughs> truly. When you first became a part of this structure, were you a lad? 
has this vision hole, I don't know what you wish to call it, that in which you're sticking your head through. Did it grow? Were you a young lad in the wall, let's say? Well, as you mentioned prior, my status as a centenarian, it means very little to me, for time passes quite slowly. I have not gazed upon my body as you might define it, because I gaze upon the ageless materials I have built around me. Plaster, mm, woods, such as mahogany and ash. These are things that develop fine patinas with age, Dave McCabe. I have to agree with you. The cookie cutter McMansions that exist today just don't hold a candle to your vision, to your commitment. Thank you again, your words of generosity make me blush bright red. Ah. Clearly, speaking of colors, Alabaster Pembrose, when I think of that, I think of myself in Home Depot or Lowe's, looking at the swatches, figuring out what should I do. Would say an Alabaster Pembrose be brighter or less bright than let's say an antique white or an eggshell? Dave McCabe, once again, your uh, references may be a bit contemporary for my classical tastes. While I am not familiar with the home depart, I do know a Mr. Truffaloid Lowe's. Yes, yeah. yes, Truffaloid Lowe's. He was a, a bastard of a man and a, 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 a fiddler and a cheat. And I recall him having grand plans of selling nails and hammers and potted plants. I do hope he rots in hell. Alabaster, come on now. You have to separate the man versus the vision and versus the, compl uh, the accomplishments of him. Keep in mind uh, the, the gentleman Sherwin-William. Ah. had a vision. And, and you gotta, like, I know that he was just a, a poor excuse for a human being, but the guy knew colors. You have to admit. Mr. Sherman Williams, yes. What a rube. I rub my face in his face and I'll tell him that he is nothing but a charlatan. Yes, he might know pigments and ointments, but it was just that. He was only skin deep. He would paint himself to fit an occasion, but I knew he had no depth. Of course not. You know what? You're right. I mean, wasn't it Sherwin-Williams that invented the stain? No. Oh, <laughs> I know. Well said, Dave McCabe. Yeah, you, you aren't kidding. I mean, my God. But mm. hey, enough about that. Uh, another Jeez. reason you're here is, by God, as a centenarian, you have seen it all. So can you compare your current state with the 1917-18 pandemic and, and, and how you feel in, in this world today as you stand? You've seen them both. How are we doing? Well, Dave McCabe, you bless me with a very damning question. Yes, it is true. I have seen the pandemics of yore. The Spanish flu I never really got per se, but it was the time when I was still concepting this house you see before you. So I was beginning to see the appeal of staying indoors, finding comfort in being inside. And that's really some of the inspiration that led to this achievement now. So you ask, how do they compare? I will only say to the people around me, the people walking the streets endangering themselves, take refuge in your home. Build yourself into a wall like me and you will find untold pleasures. That really brings me to what you mentioned before. I, I, I mentioned about your, your limbs, your, you know, the, yeah. clearly in, in your case, the, the, the walls do have eyes, the walls do have ears, but you're still a man, right? 
Oh, yes. Uh, if you suppose, I technically am a man, but sometimes I forget because my bodily functions have been not replaced, but augmented by the industrious um, facilities of this house. Pipes, levers, baskets, a network of contraptions aid me in keeping me dry and comfortable back here. That's um, really great to know. I, I did do some research on you, Alabaster, and I found uh, yeah. what was intriguing is um, the laboratory tube. Uh, it's yes. not that far. I understand that NASA um, created that sort of system whenever they were building their suits for their uh, Apollo 11 crew. Yes, I do remember back in the 70s, a fantastic time. The folks at NASA came into my abode and I permitted them to study my lavatory tubes. It seemed quite commonplace to me, but it ended up being a multi-million dollar invention that enabled space travel. Who knew? <laughs> I am. Uh, what's impressive to me is because I was wondering, how do you keep... Um, this lifestyle, and I, and I mm. clearly the patents on the laboratory tube as, as delivered by NASA. Can you tell me mm. one of the early patents that have helped you continue this life in wall lifestyle? Yes, while I do believe in free thought and have not bothered with patenting any of my fine inventions, one of my namesake tubes, which I'm sure you might have in your very house, is mm. my feeding tube. It delivers me piping hot, fresh tallow porridge. Oh, just thinking of it now, the sweet, runny, savory drippings of pork with flour and... Oh, excuse me, Dave McKay. Oh, that's okay. Folks, this is science. Just be patient. Uh, yes. Alabaster, yes. Uh, do, do uh, you feel... Like as if you've been sustained, you have now the energy to move forward. I feel invigorated, Dave McCabe. Ah, ah. That is fantastic to know. I understand they use that same tallow as the basis for that scene in The Matrix, where they're eating all of that stuff with all of the nutrients in it. So again, you are able to sustain yourself by providing this mass knowledge to the masses. Yes, that was another famed entourage to pass through my halls. One Keanu Reeves and the Wachowski brothers did ask me, how did you come up with such a novel feeding apparatus? And I said, come into my wall, stick your head inside my head hole and gaze upon my tallow tube. And they did, and then they came up with the movies, The Matrixes. That is fantastic to hear. And, and again, the, the, the having you as a resource must absolutely have been incredible for, for like you. you. You must be proud of these things, or as a centurion, as you've lived so long, this is just a matter-of-fact situation. You know, Dave McCabe, over the years and the decades and the centuries, Many people have come to me seeking wisdom and advice, and I give it freely. I just hope that the people that come to see me do so with open hearts and minds. But I do think, oh, excuse me. Do I you need a minute? That, you okay? Oh, I'm fine. Yes. It's yeah. Just, yeah, what's a minute to you, right? What's a minute to me, exactly? <laughs> Oh, uh, no, it's, uh, you know, the, the only company I, I truly uh, value is that of my confidant and tallow maintenance person, uh, Bernadette, who you saw at the beginning of the program. Oh, it, it was amazing. I, um, the arm is all I needed to see to see the love that she has and the yeah. dedication to you, my friend. Yes, her arms are her best feature. <laughs> they sure are. Well, Alabaster, you have given us so much to work with, and we're so mm -hmm. grateful for the inventions that you have inspired through 
all of your years and your wisdom as you have stood through life in that place. Yeah. So I'll finish off with a, with a few things that I think might help, a few questions to end the, the interview. Yeah. First, what sound or noise do you love? Uh, it must be the sweet plinking driplets of tallow being put into my tubes. Oh, I hear them now, the coursing chunks of pork fat swirling around my head as they oh. make their way to my spout. More than we needed to know. Thanks, Alabaster. Of course. <laughs> what, what sound or noise do you hate? Hmm. There is a noise, and you may have heard it. I... As you can fathom, my view of the adjacent wall is truly all I can see. So there's much of the outside world that befuddles me. And there are noises like vroom vroom and brat brat that startle me and I simply can't put a form to that corporeal sound. Uh, well, I will do you a favor and not tell you what they are to give Thank you, you energy to find those your own conclusions. It's like reading a book and watching a movie. Give me the book every time. Dave McCabe, I appreciate your thoughtfulness because I would not want a name to be placed upon that wretched noise. It would haunt me as I sleep. Why grow? Mm-hmm. What? Two more questions. Yes. If you weren't the amazing centenarian and architect that you are, what mm -hmm. would you like to attempt? Oh, well, I do remember as a child wanting to be a skydiver. Oh, those beautiful men and women flailing through the sky, falling, 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 until they either hit the intended landing pad of hay or soft earth to break their majestic fall. Your words and inflection move me. I Thank was thinking, you, Dave McCabe. It, it's clear. I was thinking Spelunker, which is kind of skydiver mm. going further down. Yes. Dave McCabe, have you ever skydived? I have not skydived, but it's on my bucket list. Oh, yes. I wish you luck with your bucket list. Thank you. I put an F in front of it and nothing gets done. Ah, ha, ha, ha. wordplay. Yes, sir. And finally, Alabaster, and thank you so much for joining us. If yes. heaven, ex heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? I would like to hear him say, wow. Look at this 72-room Victorian mansion set before my puny pearly gates. Pearly gates, what a, what a passe material for a gate. This really is impractical and, if you ask me, quite garish. I, uh, no, I, I would then ask that mayhaps my large mahogany doors be used instead of his pearly gates. <laughs> the fact that you have nine-foot doors in every room of your house, oh. Yes, yes. Alabaster, I'm afraid our time has come to an end, but I'm oh, sure we'll live on for a long time. such sweet sorrow. Dave McCabe, you have given me so much joy. And, and you, I, and if I only would have thought about it, I would have liked to cap this with one more inspiration, a Pink Floyd song, ah. to just put another brick in them. Yes. Alabaster, thank you for your time. And Bernadette, if you're out there, I think some tallow is in order. He's earned it. Yes, Bernadette, please, my eating shield, I hunger. Goodbye, Dave McCabe. Goodbye, Alabaster Pembrose. Hang in there.